Hey, what is going on, guys? It's your boy HyperShack23 here, and uh, today we're going to be doing a different, bit of a different video. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving you my top five unpopular opinions on the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. I, I see a couple other YouTubers do this, and I thought it'd be fun to give it a try. So these are just going to be my opinions. You can have whatever opinion you want. You don't have to agree with me. Uh, but if you do, let me know in the comments or let me know your top five unpopular opinions on Sonic. But without further ado, here we go. Number five. Shadow the Hedgehog is an underrated game and gets way more hate than it deserves. I honestly don't understand the hate that this game gets. Sure, it's not the most amazing game in the Sonic series, but it's not horrible. It's basically like a hero sequel, except with guns and motorcycles for some reason. I don't hate the game for that, you don't even need to use a motorcycle, it's optional. While the 16 endings is a really stupid idea, I can appreciate what they were going for with multiple endings having Shadow either be his own way, or a hero, or a villain. Unfortunately, like many of the Sonic games today, it suffers from having an excellent concept and a horrible execution. But the story is not all bad. In fact, it even gives us in more insight into Shadow's origin, where he came from, and why he was even made in the first place. Sure, the game is super edgy and really dark at times, but that, that's part of Shadow's deal. He's a hero who doesn't let anything stand in his way and fights for whatever he thinks is right, no matter what it takes. If I'm being very honest, I think this game and Sonic 06 were the last two games to get Shadow's character right. Because in all the games after this, Shadow's basically kind of just there to have a dick measuring contest with Sonic and really doesn't add anything to the story. I think one of the main reasons that people turn away from this game is because of all the edgy violence and swearing and gun use and, you know, motorcycles. Yeah, okay, it's ridiculous to have a hedgehog who can run at the speed of sound riding a motorcycle. That doesn't mean it's not badass though. And are we not going to talk about I Am All Of Me and Never Turn Back? Those are two of the best songs in the Sonic franchise. Number 4. Sonic Boom was the worst thing that happened to Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, no, not Sonic 06. Sonic Boom. Looking back... Sonic Boom was really just a big waste of everyone's time. Like, like who is this game even for? Clearly not Sonic fans, because he can't fucking run fast! Not to mention the fact that all these characters are just one-dimensional versions of themselves. Sonic's the egomaniac leader, Tails is just a smart sidekick, Knuckles is a dumb meathead like Patrick from fucking Spongebob, Amy's a, a girl, uh, Shadow's just a edgy dickhead, Metal Sonic's just there, Eggman is just there, Lyric is a horrible villain with basically no personality whatsoever. And don't even get me started on Sticks the Badger. Boom doesn't even feel like a Sonic game because 99% of the time in the Wii U version, it's a beat em up game or a platforming game. The few speed sections that are in the game just feel like Sonic Dash. You're running automated and you're rolling and you're dodging bricks and obstacles and shit. The DS games are a little bit faster than the Wii U version, but that doesn't make them any more fun. The stages are really long and boring and tedious to get through. And now that I think of it, I don't think there's any boss battles in the first DS game. I think there's only one at the end, and essentially you're just racing Lyric. The TV show really isn't any better than the games. Their characters are exactly the same there as they are in the games. And, I mean, the entire show is basically them just making bad jokes and references to old Sonic media. You can really only do so much of that before it gets boring as hell. I think this whole Sonic Boom fiasco thing kind of le just left people wondering, like, what the fuck were you thinking, Sega, with this? This was, this was uh, right after Lost World. We got Sonic Boom content for about, I'd say, uh, probably maybe three or four years, and then we got then Sonic Boom died, and then we got Forces. And let me just tell you now. All the effort they were putting into Sonic Boom for these three or four years, they could have been putting that into Forces, and that just really pisses me off. Number three. I hate the Freedom Fighters. I just, I don't care, I don't like them, and I don't care for them. I'm sorry. Like, I know a lot of these people are, fa like, these are fan favorite characters, but I just, I don't know, I just don't care for them. I don't like them. To me, they just seem very unnecessary. Like, okay, I get it back in the day when there weren't that many Sonic characters. All they had was Sonic, Tails, and Eggman. Okay, I guess you give Sonic some friends to hang out with. And I guess I, these were, like, you know, the first draft them. But, like, they were lasted a long time in the comics. And although I haven't read that many of the Sonic comics, 
I just, I don't feel like they're necessary. You already got, like, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Shadow, Silver, Blaze, Rouge, Omega, a fucking Cream the Rabbit, Big, the Chaotix, and then you also have the Freedom Fighters on top of that. I just, I just feel like that's too much. Now, I've seen uh, some of the Sad AM cartoons, and honestly, I think it works there. But in a, in, a, in a world where, like, Sonic has all these other friends that have already been, like, established characters, I, I just, I don't have the patience to get inv invested in all these other guys. I mean, especially for me, because I grew up playing the games, not as much reading the comics or watching the Sad AM cartoons. Plus, none of these characters have ever even shown up in games, so it's harder for, like, fans like me who haven't really seen these cartoons or read the comics to really, like know these characters, really care about them. This is honestly why I like the IDW comics better than the Archie comics, because it sticks with the main cast of characters uh, from the games, and not only that, it builds upon the games. And even when the comics do add new characters like Tango and Whisper, it's not like they have some kind of long history that you have to that you have to know in order to understand the comic. Like, with Sally, her dad was like the king of the world of Sonic or something to that effect and there was a whole history between her dad and Eggman and her meeting Sonic and their whole relationship which I thought was just honestly confusing and I couldn't get interested in it. Now I'm not saying all new characters in Sonic games backstory should be like short sweet and to the point that was a problem with Infinite but like it shouldn't be so complex and go so far back that the reader can't understand really what's going on in the story or wants to like learn more about them. The, thing, the other thing with the Freedom Fighters is there was also, like, a lot of different, like, continuities with them that I could not keep track of. And then there was this thing called Super Genesis Wave that basically, like, rebooted the whole comic world. Yeah, I, I did not understand, like, really what was going on there. I just knew that they were doing the Unleashed plot again for some reason. Uh, but, yeah, basically, my po whole point is I can't keep up with, like, the old comics. I really can't get invested in the Freedom Fighters. Now, if you're one of those people who grew up reading the comics and watching the cartoons and you love the Freedom Fighters, that's great. I I mean no disrespect towards you, but I just, personally, I cannot get invested into them. Number two, Sonic Rush is an underrated gem. I do not see enough people talking about this game. Sonic Rush is one of the best Sonic games in the entire franchise. I cannot tell you how much fun I've had playing this game. This was the first Sonic game to incorporate the boost system, and it's done so well. Even though it's a completely 2D game, Rush is the ideal gameplay I would want for Sonic. Perfect amount of classic gameplay, adventure gameplay, and modern gameplay. A lot of elements from Rush are actually taken from the Advanced series and just made better and faster overall. It's just, it's just a really fun game. I always have a great time playing it. It was also the game that introduced fan favorite character Blaze the Cat, who plays very similar to Sonic but with some differences. And the ch okay, the story for Rush in the first one's a little cheesy uh, about being, you know, power French and all that. But Sonic's always been about that. Rush also got uh, a sequel, and not really a sequel, but another game in the style of it. Sonic Rush Adventure, another is the sequel. It's really fun, even better story, uh, improved gameplay and graphics. And uh, then we got Sonic Colors for the DS which basically functions the exact same way as Sonic Rush and Sonic Rush Adventure, except they got rid of the trick system, which I'm sad about. It. But it's still fun. Honestly, these are some of my top five Sonic games. I love to go back to these no matter what. These are always a fun time for me. And come on, you can't not enjoy the soundtrack for this game. It's just freaking amazing. Alright, before we get to the number one spot, I'm just going to give some honorable mentions. These are things that, uh, these are just some small opinions that I don't really have much to say about, but I want to share them anyway. I hate Cream the Rabbit, her voice actress in Sonic X was just really fucking annoying. I don't hate Big the Cat as much as other fans do. His gameplay is still horrendous, but I do not hate the character as much. Ryan Drummond is my least favorite of the Sonic voice actors. I don't hate him, he's just lower on my list. Jason Griffith will always hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> number one. Movie Sonic's old design was okay. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, don't hate me. But in all serious, my number one unpopular Sonic opinion is... Sonic Unleashed is the best Sonic game we've ever gotten. I mean, seriously, the story, the gameplay, the graphics, all of those are amazing. 
Say what you want about the Werehog, but I love those stages. Yeah, they might be a little long, but they're still fun. And don't even get me started on that opening cutscene. That's the most detailed and beautiful scene I've ever seen in a Sonic game. Not to mention all the beautiful and expansive levels that Sonic gets to run through across the world. Hell, even in Japanese, it's called Sonic World Adventure. And the story is something that we've never seen before. For the first time in, like, years, Eggman's won. He beat Sonic. He nearly killed him. He took the Chaos Emeralds from him, took away his speed. Eggman finally achieved his goal. He built Eggman Land. This is something we've never seen before. And now Sonic has to struggle to bring the Chaos Emeralds back while also helping Chip find his memories and stop Dargaia, who's been unleashed by Eggman. <laughs> unleashed. Plus, the bond between Sonic and Chip is amazing. We actually get to see Sonic have some character development for once, which is something we never really sh usually see with Sonic. Sonic's always usually this cocky, arrogant, and confident hedgehog who always knows he'll win and beat Dr. Eggman in the end. But Sonic loses, and then when he transforms into Werehog, he actually has doubts about himself. He wonders if his appearance actually will change him or change the way people feel about him. And then Chip reassures him that it's not Sonic's appearance on the outside that matters, it's who he is on the inside. And that's why he's not even being controlled by Dark Gaia. I bet it's thanks to you. Hmm? Even at night when I'm like this, I'm still myself, not like all the other people we've seen. You must have been protecting me this whole time. Mm-mm. I haven't done anything, Sonic. You're the reason you haven't changed at all. You're too strong to lose yourself. I'm the reason? Yeah. You never doubt yourself, no matter what. You never give in to the night or the darkness inside your heart. I think it's because I knew that about you. That's why I wanted you to help me. This scene, this interaction with Sonic and Chip reassures Sonic that he is still the hero that he's always been and always will be, and nothing will ever change that. And Sonic, in turn, tells Chip that he will do no, everything in his power to help him stop Dark Guy and do his job, no matter what. Even when Chip says it's not Sonic's job, Sonic responds with, Where do you think you're off to all by yourself? What? But my memory is back now, and, well, from here on out, it's my responsibility, so, um, I mean, there's no reason for you to come along, so I should just... Do I need a reason to want to help out a friend? I just, I love this scene with Sonic because it shows that underneath all that cocky attitude and confidence, he really does care for the people around him and his friends, and he'll do anything in his power to help them. And I know I keep talking about the music at the end of these things, but come on, endless possibilities. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. These were my top 5 unpopular Sonic opinions. Let me know in the comments what yours are. And I'm going to try to do some more of these videos with uh, other franchises. Maybe Ninjago, maybe Miraculous, Pokemon. I don't know. I'll see where this takes me. Anyway guys, hope you have a great rest of your day. This is HyperShack23, signing off.